Okay. Uh, David Solomon, so Goldman Sachs, you know, when, when we were, during COVID, I would sit down with a lot of investment bankers. You talk, call them, I would have meetings with them, right? In New York, we'd go have six, seven, eight meetings with them. And I would say, so tell me what your COVID protocols are right now with your company. And I would say, well, you know, we, we can only do Zoom or we can only do this and we can only do that and we can't go to the office and we can't travel. And then behind closed doors, they would say, let me tell you, the Golden Jets are off. They're traveling. They're going and meeting with people. They're sitting down. They're meeting with the entrepreneur. They're raising the money for them. They're doing all that stuff. The reputation of David is they capitalized during COVID. I'm sure you have an opinion about David Solomon, who he is and what he's done. What do you think about David Solomon's leadership? Outstanding. I mean, company's doing extremely well. He's a very engaged guy. It's a terrific firm. You know, uh, I uh, have nothing but good things to say about Goldman. I sat down with a guy that runs a $10 billion company, and we had dinner uh, last week or two weeks ago at Casa D'Angelo. And uh, he said, you know, I just had dinner with, uh, with Solomon, David Solomon. He said, uh, two months prior to that, he said, he flew out on his jet, not with a team of five, eight people. He flew out by himself because they were trying to do a round of 900 million, whatever the number was. He says he flew out by himself and we sat down, we talked, and then he left. He had a two-hour meeting with me. That's it. He just left. I'm like, he came himself? Yeah, he didn't send anybody else? No. He came himself, Yes. You got to respect the leader like that. That's well, doing. Rem- you know. Remember, remember what Jamie Dimon said recently. He said no more Zoom because he'd lost business. Of course, of course. So this is one time they'd where Solomon them. kind of yep. took everyone's lunch. Yep. And you got to respect that. I'm sure you have an opinion also for Jamie. I think Jamie's uh, almost in a class by himself. I mean, he's a terrific guy. I have a very high regard for them. I know him well. Um, and I think Goldman, I mean, Goldman is a very accomplished firm, very motivated, uh, wants to do the business. I had my own experience, you know, I was in one of the few times I was ahead of Goldman uh, in terms of thinking. Uh, I ran Goldman Research for many, many years, and uh, I kept on telling Goldman, you're making a mistake by not being in the asset management business. And for 10 years, they told me, Lee, you don't get it. We believe go, money managers do money management. Biz, you know, brokerage firms do brokerage. Don't compete with your customer because Goldman's traditional customer is a professional money manager. Mm-hmm. And I said, open up your eyes and look around. The world has changed. You know, Merrill Lynch Asset Management, uh, Webster, which is a division of key, key to Peabody, CSFB, everybody was in the business. And uh, they didn't want to do it. And then one day, uh, Salmon Brothers, who was their arch trading rival in the se- 70s and 60s, announced that Bob Solomon Jr. was leaving the research department to start Solomon Brothers Asset Management. And Steve Friedman and Bob Rubin called me up. They were then co-heads of the firm, said, you know, you were right, we were wrong, we made a mistake, we should go into asset management. Are you willing to leave research and start an asset management division for us? And I laughed, I said, sure. Uh, It was a mistake on my part, because Goldman, being the great firm it is, understood that assets under management times fee equal revenue. Mm. And I was interested in the performance of the assets, not raising assets. And uh, after about a year of doing it, I decided I wanted to retire and become a full-time money manager. Uh, but, you know, Goldman, uh, when they go into a business, some, they're not the first, but when they go into a business, they try to capture oh. 100% market share. Yeah. They're very motivated. GSAM is a monster. Yeah, it is. Yeah. And I started. It's a trillion-dollar business now. Yeah. It's, it's-